Hi there, I wanted to talk to you today about Padlet. It is one of my favorite tools because it can be used across all content areas, uh, but also has a number of ways it can be used. Um, when you first go to the site, padlet.com, and you don't have an account, this is what you'll see. It does have a create something button, and that's what you can use to jump right in and just play with it and uh, test it out a little bit. If you think that you do want to keep walls or share walls or actually use them in the classroom, I do recommend that you go ahead and set up an account. Uh, so with an account set up, this is what the dashboard will look like. Uh, the ones down below are the ones that I've created. If I want to get to a complete listing, I click Padlets there on the left and it will show you the list that I can choose from if I need to access those. To create a new Padlet, we're going to go to the upper right, click New Padlet. It's going to go ahead and open up a new wall for us and it will go ahead and choose the wallpaper or the background for us. I'm going to come to this gear down here in the bottom right and I'm going to choose wallpaper first and let you know that you can choose your own background and you can also add and upload your own images if you like. They have all kinds of patterns and um, solid colors but they also have a notebook page. They have a calendar page if you want to use it for planning purposes you can. Another way to use it for planning or to monitor progress on a project is this task wall paper that they have. I'm going to come back to the regular paper, but if you had groups or newspaper staff or yearbook staff, they could also use that task uh, wall to um, keep up with what each person is doing. So from here we're going to have this as our wallpaper. I'm going to go back up to this basic information. A portrait would just put a small image in the upper left and then title, give it a title there. You could call it uh, Miss Williams third period class. You could call it whatever you like a description. Say I wanted the students to predict how this story will end. So we're going to read a, a new book today. I want them to make predictions on what they think it will, it will be about and how it will end so I could have that there for them. Again, there's that wallpaper choice. There's layout. So you have three choices. Free form, which means people can put a post anywhere on the board. And to actually add a post, you just double click. It will open that box for you. If you're using it with students, you may want them to always put a name in for the title. And here they can start writing. And the window will continue to expand as they add more text in there. Um, they can also add attachments. So here along the bottom they can add um, some audio, video, still pictures, and other types of attachments. Once I click off, if I need to edit, I can hover over it and I see the pencil and that will let me edit. I can also throw it away from here. So each individual student, they're the only ones who can adjust or modify their post. They can move it around on the wall. They can edit. Um, but other students who are posting to the board can't make changes to someone else's post. But you, as the creator of the board, can. So you can go in and edit and, and modify as needed. So back to layout. So it can be free form. It can be a stream. And I'll show you examples of each of these a little bit later or a grid. If you are using it and having students post to the wall themselves, I would use a stream or a grid just to prevent them from posting on top of each other. Privacy, there are a few options in here. So it can be private. It could be password protected where you choose the password. And once you make this choice, you have three other choices to make. So those with the password can either just view, they can post on it, or they could actually moderate, which would give them the power to edit and move around other posts. You can also choose hidden link and you'll have the same three choices and totally public and you'll have those same three choices add people by email. You can also turn on the option to moderate posts uh, so that way you can take a look at them before they actually get posted to the wall. Notifications. You can have it send you an email once people post to your wall. Address. This is going to give you the URL for your board but it'll also give you the chance to customize that to a certain degree. It will, it will let you know once you start typing things in if those are available. You can copy. Uh, with or without post. This is also where you would delete your Padlet if you didn't want it or didn't need it anymore. I'm going to go up here to the top. That's where you would create a new Padlet if needed. This is just your account information. 
here some share and export settings we want to talk about. So you can share with social media, export in these formats, email and print, there's the embed code if you wanted to put it on your website if using with WordPress, but I also wanted to show you that that URL is down here in the bottom right as well if you just wanted to copy that and send it out in an email, post it to your teacher web page, or send it out in Google Classroom. One more nice thing that Padlet does is it creates a QR code for each of your boards automatically. So if students in your classes are using QR codes or for open house with parents using them, it's already created for you. So now that we've got our board and we know how to post things to it, I want to show you a few examples. Um, and with these examples, I will post links to those in the comment section of the video. This one, a teacher used it for word of the day, where the students would have to use that word in a sentence. So you can see where the students posted, but you can also see where the teacher, Mr. Shaw, has gone in and made comments on their post. Another teacher used it for polygons in the real world, so they were supposed to go out and take a picture of a polygon and post it to the board. This is how um, it can be used as for a project. So it can be a project alternative to PowerPoint and other things like that. So this student used it to do a timeline on the Odyssey and put quite a bit of time into it, but it's, it's a beautiful presentation. I wanted to show you another one. This was one of our teachers who uses it for students to turn in their project. So she had them do a project on a memorial and on a monument. They actually did their projects in Padlet and then they posted to her board. So she made a class period board uh, for each of her classes so that the students could post their projects. The benefit to this is that when it's time for the students to present, you can just open up the board for that class period and then they can click on their presentation when it's their turn. So from here, when you click on an entry, you can view original and that will take you to the website or to the board or to the project that the student has created. I want to show you one more thing too. I want to go to the gallery. So this is a Padlet gallery. You can see they've got that Odyssey timeline in there as well. I wanted to show you another student project that was done. So this one the student used the stream format to do their AP project on Caesar and you can see how clean it is and how nice it looks. So I do have the Padlet Mini extension. So that's a Chrome extension from the Chrome Web Store. Padlet Mini will let you use Padlet to bookmark things. It, it's also easy access to all the Padlets you've created. So if I wanted to bookmark this page, I could add it to one of the Padlets I already have, or I could create a new one, or I can simply come to this extension to view some Padlets I've already got, so it's a quick way to open them up. So I, we used it here in my school district to thank our Education Foundation for sending us to an Educators Technology Conference. So we used it as a big thank you board um, that we could to send to them. Um, if I go back into my Padlet Mini, show you I've got a Twitter for EDU Padlet board. And I used Padlet Mini to, to bookmark all of these pages and to post them onto this board. And so that is actually my last thing that I wanted to show you on Padlet is how you can use the website and how you can also use this extension. Students do really enjoy when they get to post it to the board themselves, especially if you have that projected up on the wall that they can, can see their post and see the other classmates as their posts get put up there. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.